whole sex was about power. And he made movies with trannies raping men. Now, I'm not judging Gore Vidal. The point is, is that sex in my life is not about dominating somebody. And so you got some really screwed up people leading these movements. And the whole homosexual movement at the top is about taking over society, is about recruiting children, is about dominating and controlling. And I'm not here to be dominated. I'm not here to be controlled. I'm tolerant. But I'm not here to be enslaved. And again, even Madonna's brother has come out and agreed and said that's the case. And he said, why can the Muslims do whatever they want? And why do we have to adopt what they say, but then very open-minded Christians we say are the enemy? And he is a homosexual. But see, he's not a tyrant. And so I know tyranny when I see it. And this is textbook tyranny. So we'll get Chuck Baldwin's take on that and more and take your phone calls. This TV that usually has the calls on, it's dead, guys. We can fire that back up. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. I mean, making transgender bathrooms is about starting the conversation, getting kids into it, having it in books, and nudging them into that lifestyle. It, it's psychological warfare. Just like when they started death education in 1990, within three years, every school that did it had a tripling in suicides, even 2020. ABC News did a special on it. I covered it at the time in 95 when they actually had the piece about what happened in, in the years after it was adopted. It taught the kids how to commit suicide. The D.A.R.E. program teaches you how to use drugs. And the truth is, five-year-olds aren't thinking they're a girl. Six-year-olds aren't learning normally about oral sex. That's what's taught now. And it's sick. It's teachers and a school with a curriculum, not just telling your kids what to eat and that parents can't pack lunches now all over the country, and that you can't have dodgeball or whatever because it's competitive and hateful, but that you know Bobby has two daddies or Heather has two mommies. I mean, this is being forced with people sexualizing our children, and it's pedophilia. Now, briefly, we have struck the best deal ever that we can offer our listeners and it supports the broadcast as well. My Patriot Supply, we have their full line of products, their best discounts at InfoWarsStore.com, and their whole line is there. We have copied their whole line through their factories and private labeled at InfoWars Select. And we're going to be putting together even more complex special diet stuff, you name it, under InfoWars Select soon. But under this huge selection, high quality, you can get the lowest prices ever by a huge margin they've offered. But InfoWars Select can only offer these prices that are even lower than the actual, you know, Distributor sells anybody else for for two weeks. So now's the time to get your storable food with all this craziness going on. It supports the broadcast. It's a win-win. InfoWars Select at InfoWarsSelect.com. That's just a subdomain of InfoWarsStore.com. That will take you right there. Or call. We can answer all your questions. 888-253-3139. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. You can call and order. 888-253-3139. 13 days and counting as it started yesterday, and then it'll go to the lowest price of whatever they're offering. We can match it. So, it, but, but this is, I twisted their arm. They wouldn't do this for a couple of years. I twisted their arm. They wanted me to private label. I twisted the arm. I got you this deal. Infowarsstore.com. Infowarslife.com has got a bunch of products back in. Natural herbs that healthy, uh, get you to be able to sleep, knock out. Blows away the competition. The same cost is just one of the ingredients. If you bought it separately in a bottle like melatonin uh, or some of the other things, L-tryptophan, uh, valerian root, and still six other ingredients. Infowarslife.com. And we've got the deep cleanse, natural herbs to cleanse the body, an amazing formula. That's back in. Uh, we just sold out of the liver cleanse, unfortunately. X2, super male vitality, all of it natural the way God intended it. Okay. Going back to Chuck Baldwin of Chuck Baldwin Live, get into Romans 13, please, sir, and then speak to what you think we're being conquered by. Obviously, it's the devil, but my faith has always been strong, but now it's so strong, Chuck, because you can see this isn't of this world. I describe it, if I was a science fiction writer, of how an alien force 
would infiltrate and end a species. You end the family. You confuse the sexuality. I mean, Texas A&M has helped come up with stuff to eradicate the fire ant, eradicate, um, you know, uh, different types of maggots that get into beef uh, by attacking their sexuality with pheromones, with chemicals that confuse the sexes. This is how, if I was aliens, I'd take out the planet. You look at what the globalists are doing. It is a takedown of humanity. How can the idiot Obama supporters not get that their, that, that their health care prices have, have gone up? How can they not get that black unemployment's doubled? How can they not get they're being preyed upon by he that comes to kill, steal, and destroy? Well, and how can the pastors and churches not get that they, their obedience and submission is due to Christ, not the state, not Caesar. I think that a lot of our pastors in churches today are, are saying, in essence, what the Pharisees said 2,000 years ago when they said, we have no king but Caesar. And that's exactly the way they're acting. Because of the 501c3 issue, they're scared to death that they might lose their tax-exempt status. And therefore, they are afraid to deal with any of the issues that are confronting their, their churches and their communities, which has basically neutered the churches and the pastors. They've become completely mute on these issues. Think about it, Alex. We've got over 300,000 evangelical churches in America today. Think what would happen if just half of them or a quarter of them would stand up in their pulpits and strongly take a stand on these issues. Think about what would have happened in Kentucky if the pastors and churches had stood up. That situation there would have never taken place. This is being done because of the lack of courage and involvement of the pastors and churches in America. We have no one to blame but, but us. And the reason for this is largely the Romans 13 misinterpretation. This thing has been propagandized for the last 75 to 100 years to the point that it's now a part of the psyche of the Christian community. They don't even think about it. They just accept it carte blanche. And this is one of the most perverse teachings of Scripture that I know anything about. The whole Bible is people not submitting to tyranny. I mean, if you took out every example of the Bible of people, men and women, who deliberately disobeyed the higher power, the civil government, based upon a moral uh, conviction under God, you would eliminate... You'd get rid of Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks. <laughs> the book of Daniel, the entire book of Judges. You, uh, go through the, the book of Acts. Go through the Old Testament. Time after time, you see disobedience, willful disobedience to government, because there is a higher law than the civil law. There is a moral law. I mean, that's what Nuremberg was all about at the end of World War II. You know, the Nazi leaders tried to justify their action and said, look, we were just obeying orders. We shouldn't be held accountable for the atrocities we committed. We're just obeying orders. And, of course, the Nuremberg judges said, no, there is a moral law that's higher than the laws of men. And that's true. And it's true for all ages, all times, all people, all nations. It's true in our country today. So why are the churches and the pastors teaching their people to become good little servants, good little slaves of the state? Because they're not churches. Well, they have become government corporations. And the pastors are CEOs. And the deacons and the trustees are corporate officers. They truly are. When they signed the bottom line and they joined voluntarily, that 501c3 uh, status of the IRS, they became a government corporation, and the officers became government officers, it's corporate officers. So therefore, they're acting in accordance with that. They're not prophets. They're not watchmen on the wall. They're not speaking. They're not Paul they're, Revere. They are state-run. Exactly. They're, they are state-run. They're, they're state-controlled, and they know it. And that's the thing about it is that the third rail out there, it's an invisible rail, but they know it's there, and they refuse to touch it for fearing that the influential members of the, of the congregation, the sure. people that are giving a lot of money, well, they might not be inspired to give if there's a threat to the, five, to, you know, to the nonprofit state. And let me throw this in there, that's Pastor, because right. I want your expert take on this. The last six months, you could see the hammer dropped by the collectivists. The takeover is on, and suddenly... I got some family that goes to Methodist churches and, and, and kind of Baptist churches and stuff, and I go to some of them. Man, it's like hearing Mount St. Tongue or something. The new pope openly calling world government, saying abortion's okay. I mean, it is on. They are really showing their hand. Why do you think that's happening? 
Well, I think it's happening because it's it's the it's now the politically correct thing to do. And unfortunately, the 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 thing that's motivating most of these church leaders is success, quote unquote. And I'm taking that word not because that's what I'm saying, but because of George Barna's research a few months ago documented this brilliantly. The average church leader in America is motivated by success. Success means bigger crowds in, in the audience, bigger offerings, more programs, more staff members, and larger square footage of building. That's what success means, according to Barna's research, in the average church. So it's not about preaching the word. It's not about standing for truth. It's not about preparing. But it's not success if you've just got some government-run social club with a cross hanging on the wall. Exactly. And in, in Nazi Germany, and if you've ever read Hitler's Cross, a tremendous book, you see the photographs of the Nazi flags in the auditoriums of the churches of Germany, and sewn right in the center of the Nazi flag was the Christian cross. I mean, that's how integrated the church had become to the state. You talk about separation of church and state. We don't have it. We have the state that is taking over the church. The church is nothing but a mouthpiece for the state. I know, and, and I talk to liberals, and they go, separation of church and state. That doesn't mean this government runs the churches. It's just so inverted. It's absolutely inverted. And, and the result is the loss of freedom. Not only that, we don't understand natural law anymore. You can't even get Christian pastors to, to give you any kind of an explanation. We say, ask, can you give me just a, a, a brief summary of natural law? They can't do it. You say, where is natural law in the Bible? They can't do it. Well, Chuck, I was criticized over the years as a libertarian you know, Christian for not being more upset about the homosexual lobby. But I've just got to say now you, I can really see that it is what people said. I mean, it is a takeover. And it's just so weird to see weird socialist, communist, and homosexual groups allied to bring down Christianity with radical Islam, which would cut their throat in a minute. And, and the feminist groups have nothing to say about radical Islam and all the horrible things they do. These are really just sick, evil people uh, that are controlling all of this. I mean, they really are, at the end of the day, they're hunger to attack real Christians and to take us over. And our children really shows they're animated by the spirit of the devil. Yeah, what are Christian parents going to do now? I mean, look, this, this term just started up around the country. They're going back to a transgender curriculum in, in, the, in the schools. They're going into transgender bathrooms in the schools. I mean, where are the Christian parents on this? Are They'll they submit. really going to allow their kids to be subjected to this five days a week in the public schools? If we should ever be thinking about homeschooling, it is now. If, it, if we should ever but be But is it not about pedophilia to come in and make education about sex with little kids? I mean, this is perverted. At one time, it would have been considered a crime. It, 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 in the United States, it would have been considered a crime contributing to the delinquency of a minor. That's exactly what. It well, we always wondered how NAMBLA would get in. We know the UN wants to legalize it all, and these judges have been calling in Europe for legalizing it. And uh, you know, the, the 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 day's coming where a twenty-year-old or fifty-year-old knocks on your door and wants to date your seven-year-old, and if you don't do it, you'll go to jail. Well, you know, what what is what's going to be next? I mean, you know, Judge Roberts predicted in his dissent to the Supreme Court decision in June that this was going to segue into polygamy very quickly. Where do where do we go from there? Yeah, how do you say no to people that want to marry five women? Well, and and how do you say no to people that want to marry minors? I mean, let's uh, we we can see the age of consent that's going to be going down to accommodate people who want to marry minors yeah because that's their preference i mean you don't want to be bigoted where where is it going to end once you open, like you said at the beginning of this hour in, in your monologue alex when a society gives itself over and I, we're not saying that there's you know there's always been immorality in society we, we understand that we're not we're not trying to play god we're not trying to go in people's bedrooms and i'm the last one that promotes that kind of stuff. I mean, people that accuse Chuck Baldwin. No, they're of, coming of into our houses. For private morality. They don't know me. I don't do that, Alex. I don't. But when a society itself as a whole, when it gives itself over to moral indecency and perversion and a reprobate mind, there's not a country, a nation, an empire in world history that has ever survived 
once it has done that. That's right. Storm strikes Mecca in Medina, Saudi Arabia. 65 dead after crane.